word the word begins uh, the word has a uh, like three uh, it's, it's a process so it begin with correction so a lot of times you take the word as correcting something um i guess you got spell check now on on the computers years ago we had uh uh what is it? with typewriters they you would hit the correct thing and it would it would remove the letter for you you know but it it was correcting the letter to give you the correct word so the sentence was clear. You know, but but if you hit spell check or something like that, you know, your computer is not fighting the correction because the correction actually harmonizes the sentence well. So 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 it's the same thing in our life. When we first get the word, depends on where we are, a lot of times it's correcting something in us. It may, it's going to challenge you a little bit. So it starts with correction which is uh which facilitates discipline so discipline is normally correcting something you know uh and then it becomes a craving <clears throat> so it starts with correction but then it, it the next level goes into it becomes a craving or a passion then it goes from there to then it's a choice or a pleasure so it doesn't start out as as ooh i can't wait to wait to read the word or it's a pleasure. The word doesn't start out pleasurable. It starts out correction and more discipline. So you ain't going to feel like it. You ain't going to want to do it, and it's not comfortable. It's discipline. That means your flesh doesn't want to do something that you're going to get it to do on a consistent basis. But then you'll cross over to it starts to pick up a craving. You know what I'm saying? Now it starts, it starts to you have a passion Man, I got a, uh, actually my wife was sharing this uh, with somebody yesterday, or maybe she was sharing it during the weekend and she was telling me, but she was saying how, because I was telling her, I said, the key is, the key to a disciplined life is just discipline yourself in the word. Discipline yourself to read the word. And, and your body doesn't know the difference. You know, uh, uh, your body can only, your, your mind can only be in one channel at the same time. So if you discipline yourself in the word, all your body knows is discipline. It don't know if it's the word, if it don't know if it's working out. It, it don't know whatever, it don't know if it's, if it's eating habits. All your body knows, I'm disciplined. But it starts, you start at the core with the word. And so my wife was saying that, she told somebody recently, she said, I was telling her that for years, which I was. So she, now she, she reads the same reading plan I read. And she says, uh, now she finds herself, I got to read this reading plan. And, and so I, I was saying to myself, I told her last night, I was like, now the true test is she on this retreat. So we'll see if she finishes a reading plan. So I think the first night she called, it was one of those days she called, and she asked me what I was doing. I said, well, you know, I was finishing up my reading. She said, yeah, I finished mine. <laughs> that, that's the line around the house now. Did you finish yours? I finished mine. You know, so, so I was like, okay. I said, so, I said now you, you, you could have used that as an excuse to not read it. But she said, well, now is she's craving it. See, so now it's a passion to, man, I gotta get, she feels like something's missing if I don't finish this reading today. So, you know, especially with our schedule, we might not finish counseling sometimes to 12 or one o'clock at night. Well, sure enough, that girl be, now, I'll always slip away and I'm going, I ain't going to bed until I finish the reading. And sure enough, I, I'll be like, wait a minute, it's quiet in there. The TV ain't on. She be getting to reading it, so so it's, it's it's a passion, and and I can almost say it's probably crossed over into a choice now, where it's a pleasure. So that's our desire, but it ain't gonna start out that way. Who exciting the word? Because your body don't want to be reading no word. Your body want to do all those other things that you've been consuming. All right, so you it's it's gonna go through that process. I thought I'd help you guys out with that. The word must have its own attention or its own time and its own atmosphere. So it must have its own attention and its own atmosphere. So you wanna give the word its own time. So that's what I mean, attendance, attend to the word. You wanna be attending to the word, right? You wanna be present with the word and its own atmosphere. So atmosphere, a period of isolation in a quiet place daily. So this facilitates that discipline we're talking about. A period of isolation in a quiet place daily. Right? So you, you want to give it its attention and atmosphere. All right. I, I, think, 
I'm going to end here with this section on acting on the Word. Then we'll get into the purpose of studying the Word and some different things we could do to study the Word next week. But uh, acting on the Word. So as you, as you study the Word, you must mix it with faith in order for the Word to profit you. And let's go to Hebrews 4. As you're reading for the Word and study, study the Word, you want to... You know, it's going to stimulate faith, but you, you got you to gotta keep, keep that faith mixed in for that word to profit you. Hebrews 4.2. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So, so both people have been around the word. We talked about that earlier. So people, both people have been around the word. It says, uh, uh, it says, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So, so again, that speaks to the point we were talking about earlier. You know, you have people around the word, but, but it depends on what they're absorbing and who's attaching their faith to it. So, so, so a lot of people go, the word, ain't, the word don't work, but then they're looking at the other person, they go, and it's working for them. One person mixed faith with it. The other person didn't. See, so they acted on it. They, see, see, to, to, to step the leap they leaped on the word that they heard. So, so it, we all can be in the same building. We can all be getting the same word, but it's not going to impact us the same way because some people are going to utilize faith. See, remember, cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Mary and Martha, Martha, he said she, she, was, she was troubled and careful, careful and troubled about many things. But Mary was attended to the, to the word, something that couldn't be taken away from her. Control is something that's subject to change. You can't, you can't control everything. That's temporary. Eventually, you're going to you're gonna have to release control, especially if you're trying to control people and circumstances. Like uh, somebody said the other day, it was like, well, what I realized is, oh, no, I, was watching, uh, I was watching 24. Like the old 20, because I, I never saw it. So I was watching that. And so they asked the person the question. They said, well, you know what I realize? There's nothing we can do about it. It's out of our control. So we might as well keep on doing what we can do. So, so instead of using all this energy for something I can't control, or something you can't control, you can use that energy to mix it, have, have faith in his word. All right? And then uh, to live out the word, uh, to live out, out the word, it must be immediately applied in your life. Let's go over to the next book, uh, James. James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. It says, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. All right, so... Once again, we have to, to live this word out. We have to immediately apply it in our lives. And then uh, if your actions are in harmony with God's word, God's always nearby. If your actions are in harmony with his word, God is always nearby. And let's look at Romans 8. So Romans 8. It's not the scripture. It's Romans 10. Sorry about that. Romans 10. Romans 10, verse 8. It says, What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and even in thy heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. The word is near thee. Scripture says God will work with the, his word to perform it. So if you're in harmony with his word, God is right, right there ready to help you out. The Word will help you to access the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is waiting on the Word. I gave you uh, Acts 10, 44, and it says when Peter, when they heard Peter's words, it says the Holy Spirit fell on them. The Holy Ghost fell on them. He was waiting. Holy Spirit was always waiting on the Word. And uh, Genesis 2, 1, in the beginning, it says uh, 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 Genesis 1... I said Genesis 2 1, that's wrong. It's Genesis 1 2, but Genesis 1. Uh, 
It says, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven, the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So you got the Holy Spirit is hovering, and then God said, let there be light. Holy Spirit moved. Let there be a firmament. Holy Spirit moved. So, the, so he's always waiting on the word. The Holy Spirit is always waiting on the word. So when you speak the word, when the word is spoken, and that's why it's important, that again, you know, whether it's worship, praise, all these different things, when you create an atmosphere of God's word, when it's about God's word, not about you, but it's about God's word, the Holy Spirit shows up. You start talking about the Holy Spirit, he shows up. You start worshiping God, the Holy Spirit shows up. So, so not, it's not about performance. It's about us yielding. Uh, don't pray without the word and don't get into the word without prayer. So don't pray without the word, but don't get into the word without prayer. Because, you know, the scripture says uh, that if, uh, I know we're going to go through this scripture anyway. It's, uh, I believe it's 1 John five fourteen. But we have this confidence. If we pray according to his word, he hears us. So, so if I'm praying, I'm going to pray in line with his word. The scripture says keep him in remembrance of his word. And then I'm not going to go into the word without prayer. Holy Spirit, the scripture says that uh, this, this, uh, there's no uh, prophecy of scripture for any private interpretation, but the men of God uh, wrote this as the Holy Spirit inspired them. All right, so the Holy Spirit inspired this word. So I go into the word, Holy Spirit, speak to me, Holy Ghost. Uh, speak to me according to your word. Speak to me according to your precepts. So as I go into it, I want him to to communicate to me what he was trying to communicate. So don't go into the word without prayer. And the last thing is the Holy Spirit and his angels don't care if the word is coming out of your mouth or God's, as long as it's the word. Last scripture, Psalms 103. Psalm 103, verse 20. It says, uh, bless the Lord and his angels that excel in strength and do his commandments. And hearkening unto the voice of the word. Hearkening to the voice of the word. So when we speak God's word, see, when we attach our faith to God's word, then we, it, it changes from us speaking to God's word to God's word being spoken in his voice. Because we've attached our faith to it. So it's just as... Uh, that faith helps it to be seamless. So when that word goes out, all the angels do is they hear his voice. I read a book called uh, Angels. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> uh, by Charles Caps. It's a great book. And so in the book, uh, it showed like what happens in the spirit realm. And this is the Keith Bradley interpretation of this book. But it was like, so what I learned from the book is when you speak, okay, when you speak God's word, that empowers the angels. They excel in strength. But when you speak with the, the circumstances, that empowers the demons. So the Lord gave me a visual. He was like, so uh, uh, there's a scripture in Daniel where uh, Daniel prayed, and this, this, uh, when Gabriel showed up, he said, man, I, when you pray, man, I was on my way. He said, but uh, the, the adversary came and was stopping me for 21 days. That's why, you know, the, the fasting 21 days or whatever. But he says, man, he said, uh, he said but, but I was on my way. He says, I was held up. So the Lord showed me when we're believing for something and we speak God's word, the angels are driving it out of the heaven realm into the earth realm. But when you speak the circumstances, you know, picture a boxing ring where the angel's winning because you're speaking the word, but then you, uh, you speak the circumstances, that's like a left hook for the demon. You know, so every time you speak God's word, that advances the angel. Every time you speak the circumstances, that advances the demon. So you want to watch what you say. You know, the, you know, the angels hearken unto the word. So when you speak the word, all the angels know is, as God's word, bring, we got we to gotta help bring it to pass. That's all they know. It's not about, I don't know if I want to do that right now. That's why angels are angels and we're, we're see, angels don't, they don't operate off choice. 